Vision, you have Kogma, you have Caitlyn, like all these very damage oriented, not supportive style. You can play them all. You can build comps around them and they're super successful. And also Rainover, this guy was a multiple MVP. Like he was incredible in Europe and in North America for quite some time with Immortals. Tank junglers are back in. So there's certainly a lot of comfort picks that are gonna be available for both of these players. And they should be the standouts really on this team when you're talking about big names. Yes, and we'll see if it can happen. Again, mentioning Piglet, six, one, and three, I think it was on his Twitch game, or six, one, and two, certainly a great scoreline. Rainover actually did not have a good start. He was a less than one KDA in both those games against CLG. Stats don't say everything, of course, but still need to see him step up a bit more. First pick, Shen, has come through for Liquid. And, and it was interesting because although everyone kind of talks about Rainover as the tank player, you know, he elected to go with early Elise and a Rengar, right? You know, not traditional mm -hmm. tank style junglers. And, you know, Sejuani jungle is something we have seen in some other regions. Gragas, uh, as a good top jungle flex, has been powerful. Zach obviously getting banned out a lot, but that is a very powerful tank jungler. Yeah. Olaf has always been something that he's been very good on. So there's a lot of junglers that he has had a lot of success over the years on that are in the meta now. And, you know, with Elise getting picked up here for Acadian, I think that Olaf can be a good response. Uh, that traditionally has been one that a lot of teams have been using. We'll see what ends up being. A Fox gonna have a nice early pressure jungler for Acadian that is one of his hallmark heroes of player. Varus alongside, so Keith has the option of playing Ash and he doesn't go for <laughs> it. Insane! Pick ban out of Echo Fox. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, they also are passing up on Caitlyn here, too, right? Sure. I don't know. It's, you're just making a joke. But <laughs> Caitlyn, sorry. very powerful of early course. early AD carry pick here, too. That's still going to be available. And, and I think it fits Piglet's style, but they are electing to skip over that. And that's something that we saw them doing yesterday as well, which was something I, I didn't love about their pick ban. You know, when Piglet is getting pushed down to a Jin or whatever, not that there weren't other options, but when they feel like that's something they have to pick, I have never seen Piglet as that successful supportive style AD carry. He was very outspoken about the fact that he didn't like playing that sort of style. So, you know, why relegate him to that when he's probably going to be targeted in picks and bans for the second round? I totally agree with you. So we are going to see the first phase of picks done. Elise, Varus, Karma. We know Karma can be a flex. We've seen several players bring Karma out into the mid lane, although it is still more than likely that Gate is playing it down there alongside Keith. Of course, a great bot laner in general. Lulu as well a flex. I think I've seen Sushi play it in the professional league before, but again, considered to be a support pick more often than not. Rainover is going for another high damage, low durability jungler here. You mentioned the Elise, you mentioned the Rengar, now a Kha'Zix to join the mix. So still it's it's early pressure and squishiness out of Rainover. Uh, it's less CC, but at least they have the Shen for being a tank in the front line. Yeah, definitely. And, and I do think that when you look at Team Liquid's roster here, okay, so Caitlyn and Twitch have been taken away, but if you want to play a Protect the AD Carry composition, you can still draft something like Orianna Kogma as your second phase. And, and that may be taken away, but that is a very powerful composition in combination with the Lulu and the Shen to buff up and protect that AD Carry. Uh, we haven't really seen Piglet playing something like a Kogma. He, he had that great Twitch game, and we know he can play Caitlyn and some of these. Yeah. Um, but will he have the confidence to actually go over onto a Kogma? We'll see what it ends up being. They are not going to add a Syndra ban here from Liquid. So Fox have a chance to blind pick a Syndra if they want him to. Is one of those marquee mid laners, but Frog and Solution is gone, and Orianna, one of Solution's hallmarks, is still available. And, I mean, you can go for, you know, blind pick Syndra here. Uh, but one of the issues with blind picking Syndra uh, on the red side here for Echo Fox would be if Slushy can actually play something like the Fizz or like the Echo, that can be a pretty favorable matchup. So you grab Galio, which can be a mid flex. We saw Bjergsen play it, not to too much success, but he did yep. play it a couple games in a row. And uh, this can open you up for more kind of counter picks. And Froggen was nonstop tweeting about the Galio in that Bjergsen game, actually. He was like, oh, it's mid Galio with a bunch of like heart, <laughs> like heart face emojis. So we know Frog is happy to play it. Maybe he was trying to bait Liquid into thinking it was going mid. Who knows? Either way, Kogma does come through for Piglet, so another very auto attack focused bot lane, and that Syndra kind of blind comes in against Frog and Zeko. Yeah, so this is this is actually really smart because uh, the Galio would have matched up well against the Shen regardless. You're happy putting it at top. It, can, it is pretty good against basically any blind pick. AP mid laner as well because you can itemize into magic this very easily and wave clear. Uh, so they have a pretty nice pushing top. They get the counter pick on mid lane here. They have a solid bot lane, an aggressive jungler for Acadian. So I think there's very powerful playmaking. Uh, a lot of ways in for the Galio here too with both the Echo and the Dive on the Elise. Uh, that said, Team Liquid, I think that they're looking much more for a late game. You split push it out on the Shen. You try to keep this uh, kind of a slower pace. And mm -hmm. if Kog'Maw can get the late game with Lulu and that Shen backing him up, 
Piglet could be monstrous. Absolutely could be monstrous. Piglet on auto attackers has been pretty great so far. The split, we'll see if that continues as we get ready to go into the first game of this match. Echo Fox did get a very nice 2-0 win. Not the most convincing, but 2-0 is a 2-0. So Echo Fox came into this one 1-0 in matches by beating up FlyQuest yesterday. Liquid had dropped against CLG 0-2 themselves, but certainly have the chance to fire back. And with Slushy now in the lineup, Filling in with a Syndra in the mid lane. Liquid are going to hope that there's some more strength through that mid through which to push this game over. Liquid have had some very good early games and have failed to close them out. I don't know if the Slushy Chain is going to change that, but I think that having a high damage carry may be enough to move the needle there as we get ready to go into this game one. Yeah, it's definitely possible, but to me, you know, their problems against uh, CLG, you know, looked much more like it was about shot calling, macro play, rather than, you know, composition or even sure. individual, you know, outplays and things like this. They just didn't know where to be on the map at the right times. And despite massive early game lead that was kind of gifted over to them uh, by CLG, where Piglet actually started with three kills at three minutes and double buffs, yep. they went even in lane, they're trading turrets, you know, that's not the kind of thing you want to be having happen. Uh, from that position of power. Absolutely agree. So we'll see what happens here as we get ourselves into the first game of this one. Liquid hoping to maybe make that top four that used to be known for back in the day. It's been struggles and roster issues for the last year here for Liquid and Blue. Echo Fox never quite had the split they wanted. They've been steadily improving, but maybe not at quite the rate. Initially, it was we're a summer split team. Then summer came around and it still wasn't very special. And this time around, they kept the roster together, and I think maybe this time around, it really does come forward as something useful. And at the beginning of, of spring, last, you know, this last spring, they were doing very, very well at the start, and it seemed like uh, things were all on the up and up. They were going to be this very powerful team, and then it, it kind of started going downhill. And a lot of that, you know, success at the start was on the back of Acadian, but as some of the carry-style junglers were getting nerfed, he wasn't finding nearly as much success, and that really made it so that they're, they didn't have that early game power anymore, and they weren't really having a lot of success out of the bot lane either, so they had been kind of losing their strengths, and uh, it felt like they fell back into some of their more old problems. We'll see if any of them get fixed here under this one. As minions have spawned, and... That Galio skin looks super sick. It's distracting me, but it really <laughs> is. I think that's actually maybe my favorite skin or up there now in the game because he looks awesome. We're going to get ready to go on this one. Looks like a Raptor start for Acadian, and actually Froggen's not going to give that away. It's actually trivial for Echo to toss a Q in to make that a bit faster and doesn't seem to care. Rain Edward does get help from Slushy. One thing I will say, and uh, I know this from experience, is when you're playing Galio top and you're leashing, if the mid laner leashes as well, you are probably going to steal some of those little <laughs> raptors, and your jungler may flame you and then leave the game. Uh, so <laughs> these are things that <laughs> can happen. Uh, you know, because Galio with his passive auto is oh, AoE, yeah. plus the Winds of War does so much damage. Uh, any more damage, oftentimes you steal from the jungler. And I assume it's something that they've practiced before. It's like, yeah. hey, just echo Galio one shot the wave. All right, maybe we shouldn't go for it then. And Either way, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. As both jungles go to their respective reds, and then Elise heads, uh, and actually the cause is the same, going for Krug's clears as well. Oftentimes, this means an early level three recall from the junglers, and they'll be back on the map with full health and a control ward afterwards. Piglet and Matt getting shoved out. Of course, level two comes first in for Gate, and Piglet at a 200 HP. Nice trade out of Keith and Gate. Piglet did not run away in time. Yeah, that's just something that's like a, a lot, a loss of focus almost. You know, you should be able to count the minions, know when they're hitting level two, anticipate this and back off early. Yes, you have to give up a little bit of CS, but oftentimes it's worth giving up one or two CS to actually maintain the health uh, so that you can then fight for more later. Exactly. And thankfully, Doran's shield is great regen and Piglet should be back to full HP off just the first potion without too many issues. Akadi now looking in for the top side of mid lane and actually just coming around of course as Slushy is all the way in but he was there in case a gank came through from Rainover. None was seen and they're going to be fine. Rainover of course did go for the recall and is back on the map now with that control ward. As Kadian stayed on the map but they didn't get anything for it. Yeah, I mean he is going to be able to complete a full clear if he wants. He did get the scuttle, so a little bit of top side yeah, protection that's for the Galio. That's something that can be pretty nice because uh, very often the Kazakhs will do this free camp recall where he starts at Raptors. And knowing that, the second place and kind of the first place of attack is going to be top lane. So taking down the scuttle, getting in a ward, that gives a lot of protection for your Galio against Shen Kazakhs, who has a fair bit of gank assist. Yeah, that's a fair point. So a little bit safety there from Akkadian and does lose maybe a little bit of selfishness because again, he didn't get to buy and get a control ward out, but at some point, of course, he will match that recall. Rainover staying in the farm game, has one camp left to clear till his side of the jungle is all gone. And at this point, the Raptors are gonna be spawning in 10 seconds. Matt taking a big chunk of HP down. Wow, 100 health left on him. Good trade out of gate and Keith. 
And they could have maybe even ignited there to actually force a summoner at the very least. I, I think you yeah. would have gotten a heal out. Um, but you know, it's one of those calls that it can be a bit risky if you can't get that summoner payoff. Uh, getting that low though for Matt, he's out of potions and uh, with the ignite available on gate, if he eats another round of poke like that, he's gonna be in so much trouble. And Kaden looking to stalk Rain over. Here comes the attempted stun from Frog. I'm not gonna land that just yet, but the cocoon from the Fog of War is gonna land, and First Blood comes through, and continually Echo Fox find the early invade thanks to Acadian. Yeah, very well done. They had a ward on the Raptor, so they saw him come around, but Piglet in trouble now in the bot lane. 200 HP left. Keith with the shield still, I think, wins that trade, and looks like they'll be forcing an early recall and a pretty painful one at that. Out of Liquid bot lane, not enough money for a Vamp Scepter on Piglet means he wants to wait for one more wave. Yeah, and Akadian is behind Slushy here too. Uh, is spotted out by the pink ward, now knows that, but... So this is the ward there. In the Raptors that Frogna had laid earlier, they spot him, Akadian comes around, lands the Cocoon, Flash in immediately from Froggen, knowing they can commit for that. And not only do they get first blood, that's a flashless Rainover who's going to have to be so scared in his jungle going up against this first blood Elise. Yeah, unfortunately for him, the flash was actually useless. He didn't quite judge the damage right. And yeah, that's going to make things hard. Acadian level 5 waiting, waiting, waiting. Says, okay, you're maybe doing Krugs. If you walk back, I'll find you. And right now, won't find that second kill just yet. But it can be so tilting to die inside your own jungle after you just died again. Look at this patience out of him. And there's a ward just to his right. If he steps out, Rainover knows. And now he knows. Do you have to remember the time investment here, though? They're actually TP. TPing down, but Rainover is here. So this is a risky dive. I don't know if they can really go for this. I think they need to call it off, but they're going to try anyway. Match Double support. TP is there. They get Lolo to come down. Top lane wave shouldn't mean too much <laughs> on either side. And everyone just walks right back away. And unfortunately, Greco Fox is a waste of Acadian's time. Yeah, waste of Acadian's time. And they expend two teleports to just the one uh, to answer there. So. Summoner is down. They wanted to get oh, up yeah. the play, but they never knew uh, that Rainover was right around. And had he not been there, they perhaps could have gone for that dive, and it would have been well executed play. But now, trying to make advantage of that and go for the Inferno. At the very least, they do get this. A lot of this was the bot lane pressure itself because of what Heath and Gate were doing. And props to them for winning a lane. Sure, the matchup is an advantage, but with how much flat Heath has gotten, props to him. And now the trade on to Slushy. Level 6 available on the Syndra. You know, Frog can catch out if he needs to. And he's going to jump right back oh. in for a stun on the Kha'Zix and gets out. That was nicely played by Froggen. That was actually super well timed. Uh, ulting back right at the moment as the parallel convergence is coming down. So you stun Rainover. You have a free way out. You can even proc the passive for the move speed there very easily. So that was pretty slick from Froggen. Definitely agree on this one. Advantage lane or not, Heath and Gate doing well in the bot lane. They've helped secure an Infernal Drake. As a result, Echo Fox, of course, got that first blood thanks to Froggen and Acadian. So really props all around so far for Echo Fox. And an early lane swap, Luber's going to head bot lane. And the is going to try to push down this Shen. Yeah, and I think Luber just actually stayed bot after they went for that dragon uh, because their bot lane had not base yet. So you can just keep Galio down who, here who can easily wave clear. That's one of the biggest strengths of this guy as a tank is his ranged wave clear. So you put the bot lane up top, you can pressure that turret, and Shen cannot defend in a 1v2 or 1v3 anywhere close to as well as Galio can. Yeah, Galio definitely, because they both can taunt, so if you go and attack the turret, they can both make you pull aggro, but Galio actually has wave clear like Shen does not, so here we go. Slightly better items on the marksman of this Varus, and we'll see how the damage comes across, and there we go. The wave clear at works, it, it saves several turret shots just by dealing damage to those minions as Luger backs up. He knows better than to give away a kill here. And depending on how good his ward coverage is, he can see Rain over his Lincoln by as well. And no threat on him. This turret will definitely fall for topside. Echo Fox making the best of an already good situation. First turret and that Infernal Drake and first blood. And they can actually keep pushing because you had Spiderlings tanking a little bit there as well. The second wave has come in. So this is thinned out enough by Looper that Echo Fox can likely get two turrets plus the first turret. So they are really getting a pretty big map advantage here over TL. And this is kind of what they were struggling with against CLG the other day. Really nice stuff. Piglet needs another wave before that turret falls. And meanwhile, Echo Fox getting so much more out of this. And the early game for Echo Fox continues to be incredibly strong. They might even finish two before one gets done. Yep. Even though Piglet will definitely knock down bot lane himself. Actually, as Looper comes in, he can maybe contest the Kog'Maw off the wave. And Echo Fox might have time. Keep yeah. it alive for a little bit longer. Piglet's basing, so they're not even going to oh, get wow. one turret. So they give up first turret, two in the top lane. Now mid lane is being pressured. Galio can free shove and bot. Uh, and this early game has turned into a, a, just such a mess for TL as yeah. they were not able to actually match the pacing. Uh, the rotation down and, and leaving Galio to wave clear was, was really very smart uh, from Echo Fox. And they're off to a big lead.
really big lead. Nicely done by Echo Fox. Yeah, they've got all the tools to work with now, and nowhere else to go for your bot lane except for your duel lane to take step back to bot. You think there's no turrets to kill, but they are still heading over there, leaving Looper in the bot side of the map. Maybe Rift Herald coming up in 45 seconds is the reason they're keeping their strong side of the map over there. Another recall out of Acadian is level 6. Rainover has outfarmed him at least level 7 on this Kha'Zix. Yeah, that is one thing going for them, but I mean, the first blood gold over to Acadian, mm -hmm. he still should probably uh, be stronger overall, and he has his By 800 completed gold. enchantment, so yeah. that's pretty big. Uh, Froggen should be winning this 1v1 isolated as well, as that's kind of a counter matchup, and Rainover doesn't have his sleep, but team it should be fine that's it's not enough threat on him so she does get a blue buff for all the effort and that's something back in and even a scuttle crab on the way down still want to see what the next aggressive moves are i've been nothing but impressed how echo fox have played these first 10 minutes let's we'll see if they can keep going and i think you did call it right uh, you know talking about that rift herald keeping the bot lane top uh, you have Galio kind of on the bot side clearing, and there's already pings that were over onto the Rift Herald. Echo Fox has three or four members up here if you want to count Echo. They can look to clear out the jungle and then even pressure that Rift Herald if bot shows down here. What are the odds they get a 13-minute inhibitor turret? Like, it's it's in the realm of possibility yeah. to summon Rift Herald and say, your inhibitor is ours before Barons even spawn. That is a potential play, and it's fun to think about what can be done, but you're right. A pretty much immediate Rift Herald take. I do like this out of Echo Fox. This is pretty good yeah it's really good and i mean while while taking that rift herald or and, and going for the inhibitor turret can be strong in this position i actually prioritize just going bot lane and just getting easier turrets yeah because you know knocking down that inhibitor turret what is it actually going to get you unless you're going to be able to actually go in and take down that inhibitor and then pressure something with it you essentially just end up allowing them to have like a permanent freeze get more waves kind of farming uh, down there and it's more risky so you're not guaranteed to actually get that turret yeah, absolutely i guess i to be fair, to, to backtrack on myself, it was more interesting than maybe the yeah. right choice, but yeah. interesting is what I live for here as a player, as a commentator. <laughs> and Echo Fox going to give this over to Froggen. Of course, he has running TP in the mid lane, so they can 1-3-1 eventually, and Froggen is empowered to knock down a turret by himself with that. Yeah, and, and at that point, you know, when Froggen goes into the side lanes, uh, it's going to be very, very strong. And, and how you use this Rift Herald is very interesting, because you can just hold on to it for a few minutes, utilize the empowered recall. If you can get a pick first, it makes it so strong. And they have very good dive, very good engage. If they can actually move the Galio and the Elise around somewhere with the Echo, Echo dives in, drop the Galio ultimate, looks to get a pick, then immediately drop the Rift Herald. You can often, instead of just getting one turret or damage, you can get two. Oh, look at this, they're right on the Polymorph. They're gonna try to knock down oh, Gabe, Galio but not just yet. Galio joins for a big knockup. Rooted, airborne, taunted. The CC just was layered on Rainover. But they all do get away with it for now. Froggen now summons Herald for the mid lane, and they're gonna come to stop this. The charge gonna come in pretty soon. It'll get it down to about 10% HP. And one more hit will knock it down for this one. Polymorph is still shielded up, and Froggen's gonna run away. A couple more swipes should knock that down, and mid lane will indeed fall. Looks like they use it pretty early onto this one. Herald's still at half HP. They can go for mid lane tier two, potentially. The Liquid are here to defend, and it means that Echo Fox is likely to back out. Just that chunk will be all they get. And I think it's pretty well done, though, from Froggen. You know, as soon as Slushy moves out of lane, you know you're almost guaranteed to get that first turret. And I think as long as you get one full turret like that, it's super worth. And they even get a little bit of chip damage on the next with that charge. They're in position to pressure this dragon. And what can TL really do from here? They don't have their waves in the right spots to trade anything out. Rift Herald's already gone off the map. So Echo Fox is just outplaying them completely yeah. in the map game a lot of really great plays here. You think about what they even gave up to take Rift Herald, the decision to put Heat and Gate topside. They traded a 200 health bot lane outer turret for the right to take Rift Herald when they wanted it and take away that entire Western jungle. Just good plays down the line. Now look at Lorlo pushed away. Good stuff by Froggen. And one of the things you often trade when you do move your, your bot lane top and you do these coordinated three, four man pushes early is you lose CS on your AD carry. Because there's three or four people there, you're just trying to shove the wave. But in this case, even though Piglet was by himself bot for all this time, he's actually down on Keith in the farm, plus down in the global gold. So they didn't really get anything out of it. They're even on levels. There's not even an experience advantage. So nothing has really seemed to go right for TL. Keith right now over 600 gold above Piglet, despite the fact that he's got no kills to his scoreboard. Bot lane out are going to fall. Top lane the same, though, in Liquid's favor. They're going to trade objectives so far. It's going to be a repeat, though. Echo Fox is going to push for two, and TL's not going to be able to because they're behind the play. The jungler's already down here, and you have Galio to wave clear. So, you know, Echo Fox again taking more turrets. It's going to be their fifth turret. 
13, 14 minutes into the game. At least this time around, the recalls made sense. They are still going to lose this turret, but at least the top lane outer actually fell and picked up the last hit there. But you are absolutely right. It is a two for one turret trade. The gold lead, the mountain drake, the infernal, all obviously helping with that. But as you mentioned, in champ select, it's the Galio. The, the, compositionally, they are better suited to this, and it's playing off. It, it really is, and and that's why you can't always just match your opponents. You have to, you know, force your will upon them. You have to play to your own composition strengths, uh, because trying to have a Shen match wave clear with the Galio is just never really going to work out for you. And of course, Akadian has been in the right place at the right time to push faster than Rain over here as well. And they have just put themselves in such a hole. I mean, it's crazy to think you're only one kill up 14 minutes in, but you're down 5,000 gold, like, which is a monumental lead oh, yeah. at this stage in the game. I want to ask you a hard question. And again, it's a hard question. Who do you give more credit to? Is it Echo Fox doing really, really smart things more than Liquid screwing up? And you said you can't match your opponents if their comp is like this. Who gets more of the nod for why it's going this way? Um, I, I'd like to say Echo Fox simply because I, I kind of want to give them credit for the fact that it does feel like pretty well planned out. They had planned out their things a few steps ahead. It didn't just feel like they randomly went top and randomly had these things happen. They double TP bot. They leave their Galio there. That is premeditated to answer the wave clear possibly there. They move their stuff top. They then are planning around this Rift Herald. Like, I, I feel like everything has been planned a couple steps ahead for them, and that's why I want to give them some credit. But of course, in any situation where you get an enormous lead like this, there is fault to the other team there too. Yeah. Uh, Liquid did not respond properly to Echo Fox's good plays the case and it's always interesting when you see good plays like these if you haven't seen them yet if no one's made this move against you you've got to you've got to make it up on the fly and, and later on in the split maybe this is more common play for all of this galio and it becomes commonplace week seven but week one maybe it's a bit more unusual and as you mentioned liquid not quite responding properly and that's fair you know in the context of the NALCS. but if you watched msi the gigabyte marines actually utilized early lane swaps in combination with Galio picks very frequently. And that's something that you should be able to think about, you know, as an analyst and as a pro player, what are the strengths of this champion? Well, impressive long range wave clear. Well, that's probably gonna be a lot better in defending a 1v3 or a 1v4 uh, than someone like a Shen, right? So you have to think about the strengths and weaks in your composition, where you excel, where you fall behind, and really play to that. And uh, Team Liquid has not done that this game, and that's why they're so far behind. It's like, you may have lost the game before you even fought, essentially, in this server. So another question is how good is Echo Fox's mid to late game shot calling going to be? They've we've seen all kinds of games of them having early game leads this good. The first blood king, Akiadin himself, got it again here in this one. And the question is what more can they can they do? First 15 minutes, good shot calling. They've gotten a 5 to 2 turret lead, but as we crest the 6,000 gold lead in the 17 minute mark, the turrets aren't free anymore. You've got yep. to start making some good plays. There's no rip throw to give you one on the back of its own hard work. So Echo Fox, what's next for you? Uh, and I do agree. And in a lot of situations. Uh, that becomes a big question for me. In this one, I, I will give them the credit of having what I think is a pretty easy game plan. You can 1-3-1 one, one, uh, with this Echo. You can even 1-4 and have the Galio with the team protecting, and you have a ton of wave clear between Karma, Galio, Varus, and Elise. Like, that is a massive amount of wave clear from that squad. And then you have now Froggen, who's quite ahead in gold because of Global Gold and his farm and he can just split push essentially until he gets an enormous advantage. Like this seems like a pretty clear cut way to end the game uh, simply by playing side lanes and wave clear. And it looks like their general split push capacities are gonna look good. Froggen, regardless of which lane he goes to, is against two magic damage dealers in Lorlo and Slushy. Maybe Rain over turns that around if he can show up to that lane. Mm -hmm. right? It's not like Froggen has itemized armor yet. He went Merc Treads. Uh, by the opposite point, Lorlo and Slushy just have only magic damage to deal with with Akadian playing Elise. There's small elements that can soften the, the blow of the gold lead, but it is still there for, for Echo Fox, obviously. Yeah, and to your point, you know, Kha'Zix is a great champion at, at picking off split pushers. Um, but that said, Galio also does help alleviate some of that issue uh, quite a bit. You know, if you have Froggen in the bot lane, say Galio in the mid lane helping to wave clear, you don't have to live that long before this guy is in range with a level two or a level three ultimate to actually come in and turn things around. We'll see if that safety comes in for Echo Fox, but they don't even need it. Reaper has yet to use his ult. Oh no, he has, I take that back. He has popped it in once in a river team fight that became a zero for zero in kills regardless. And looks like it's Piglet who's given a lot of space to push in the top side, but he's already pushed out Froggen. So it's maybe a three, one, one for these guys calling for, I think it's actually four information or something. 
I think it's the non-emergency police hotline. Doesn't <laughs> matter. I've already ruined the joke. But either way, Echo Fox still retaining map control. And because they got that first Drake six minutes in, they're going to get so many to kill. I believe they can get up to five Drake stacks this game before Elder Dragon spawns. And they know it's only going to be Mountains, Infernals, and Clouds here. And it's going to be double Infernal next up. So lots of late game scaling available with Echo Fox to keep control of the bot side of the map. Yeah, there definitely isn't. You know, at the same time, we do know 4TL. Uh, you're building a very strong team fight composition, and if you can funnel enough farm into Kogma, and then Xbox takes a bad fight or gives up a Baron or something like that, all of a sudden you can sometimes just walk down and kind of kill the other team and end the game. So, you know, Echo Fox definitely does not have a, a free win here by any means, uh, but they have put themselves in a, in a really good position. Uh, to take this game, and the fact that Froggen is already on his Lich Bane plus Proto Belt, like such a good position to split push. Totally agree, and we'll see what they can do with this one. Echo Fox putting their core together, jungler, bot lane support. That's that's the core three that's going to roam around. As you mentioned, it's one three one. They're the ones doing the heavy lifting through the jungle, using Acadian Sight Stone, using Gate Sight Stone, and making sure that Looper and Froggen can just focus in the lanes themselves. And you're seeing that they're mostly playing right now around Froggen's side. And I do really like how much they have focused on vision, right? If you look at TL's uh, blue side jungle, there's an enormous amount of wards just got dropped there. They have a line of pink wards around kind of their weak side of the map where they're not focusing on that vision. And, and it's going to give them so much more freedom to actually push aggressively and, and set up picks, perhaps, like what just happened on Matt, where you force out that summoner because he needs to try to fight back for vision as the Baron is unlocked. And as this side of the jungle is lost, you can farm that out and really get edges. Flash down, 300 second cooldown, so 25 minutes when it comes back up. Maybe they find another catch. It's only been a one kill game, but it's been one where Echo Fox has certainly made almost all of the good moves. Liquid hoping to continue to scale up. This Kog'Maw can eventually become a threat, but still yet to finish the Hurricane. Once again, checking on the gold between these two Marksman players, and it is 700 apart in Keep's benefit. And here comes the early sub-21 minute Baron Nasher attempt, and it's in full fog of war. Exactly, that's the benefit of all the vision control they've had. And, and TL may not be expecting them to make such a bold move this early on, and the Baron is just gonna go straight over to Echo Fox because of their vision control, and because of the lead, TL is way too scared to even approach. It's really, it's, it's a damn if you do, damn if you don't, Echo Fox. For the last six minutes, it felt like all they did is say, let's play around Baron Nasher Vision, just completely control that side of the map, and when it spawns will finally go, and you can see there it was. This was, I think, several minutes in the making, just continue to make sure that that side of the map looks good, and Echo Fox reap the rewards of a low-risk, incredibly high-reward play, and now with Baron, Echo Fox can do even more. Yeah, and, and we talked about their win condition of split pushing. The Baron unlocks that so much, and this early in the game, it's incredibly difficult to clear three waves of Baron minions. So if Echo Fox can actually have this set up, you have the 131, buff up minions in all three lanes, it's very likely that they can get some damage down on these inhibitor turrets or perhaps even crack and get an inhibitor this early on. And it's been a pretty easy game to sit and play and for some of the Echo Fox members to just show up here and kill the mini waves in front of you and make sure you don't screw up your auto attacks. And it's been good shot calling. That is the 95% of the legwork here for Echo Fox is just simply being in the right place and having the right plans. And now they're playing around the bot side. Maybe near the mid lane as well. The minion wave is here, and they're looking for the potential dive. The shield for Frog keeps him safe, and that's going to be turret number one of the Baron buff. Still two minutes to play with. And, and this is one of the things, is, is you put the right people in the right place, you start getting XP advantages, they're taking over their jungle, and you can see XP advantages are opening up. You know, two levels up for Acadian, two levels up for Froggen, a level up for Keith. Like, the experience alone is so big and adds so much power to, the, to their players and to these yep. champions. It even uh, has power to the minions. Yeah. Turret deficits also. So even the minions are better than TL's minions based on how League of Legends works right now. So difficulty all over the board. Baron Buff even adding to that. And now onto the bot lane inhibitor turret. Looks like Echo Fox can look for a bit more. Gate completes the support quest. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. I it, we had one kill. I got to get something from you guys. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. And it's actually, uh, I think, the best support quest because the move speed is actually quite nice. But Froggen now looking Oof. to set up a little threatening dive. And he has his lift bait. He can get a lot of damage done. Rain over and half. Holds back out for safety. Back to full HP. And there we go. And Hibbert Turret is gone. Turret number two dead. And I mean, TL's not even fighting this. Lolo is still pushing top. They're essentially just making the call to give up their inhibitor, which this early on feels like a bit of a death sentence as there's still lots of time on the Baron. They could potentially even lose another. Cocoon almost lands on Lucia. That could have been a kill, but now it's actually almost lights out for Caden, able to repel up, and Looper 
Buys him a bit of time as well, but Acadia's still gonna get attacked. It looks like Patience may just pay off. Will they take him down? The flash, Rain over and Piglet secure the kill. 1-1 one, one on the scoreboard. As the champion has finally died, as Froggen will run through the base to leave Piglet. He gets some damage though. Look at how much he's actually got. Old Snipe could kill him. Oh, one more hit, the flash follow. And a flash to run for Froggen. He's out of range oh, oh, now, oh, oh, and Piglet oh. does not have. Oh, he does! Oh, oh, he does! He actually had the mana. I take it back, Piglet! from downtown gets the kill. Uh, nicely done by Piglet, picks up a blue buff, a couple kills. If there's gonna be one savior in this game, it has to be Piglet. So giving him that gold uh, is gonna be pretty big for them, but they did lose an inhibitor and a lot of gold on this push. And they were very patient. It was actually Echo Fox that make the play, allowing them to come back in as Acadian. Looks for this cocoon on the side. Uh, they wanted more than just the inhibitor. And I believe he goes for it right here onto Slushy. Flash, the flash respond, and look at the damage coming out of Piglet, almost taken down immediately. This prompts them to just go for the all-in. Lolo is here, they know they can chase, as Acadian is already essentially out of the fight. This is all just after the inhibitor had already died. They chose to stay and look for more kills, and of course that didn't happen. And in this chase on a frog, and I mean, really good damage out of Piglet, of course. Crits on one of the auto attacks, crits on two, wow, actually, three crits and five autos is really rare for a Kog'Maw with exactly 30 crit chance. So lucky for Piglet for sure, but the blind snipe, really beautiful. Good stuff from him. Another Infernal though, unfortunately gonna go the way of Echo Fox. As they get their fourth straight dragon. You talked about the dragon dominance. They will be able to pick up a fifth if it comes to that point. But now double Infernal added into the mix makes things even harder. They have the bottom inhibitor down, which is the ideal one for pressuring Baron as that comes up. Uh, and they can simply do a 1-4 split. A uh, looper pushes mid with the rest of the team. And if anyone tries to collapse onto Froggen, you can alt right over there. Yes, they can. So into the mid lane, they're going to go with this. Frog can actually backfill into the mid lane as well. They're going to stay with five. Unfortunately for Echo Fox, they don't have quite that deathless game they were hoping for. The overstep inside the base did drop them two, but it may not matter. Downing kills are relevant when you're up seven to two in turrets. And look for that mid lane. No attacks coming in just yet, though. They're still playing a bit safe, looking for Poke more than anything else. And they're going to wave clear and keep his mana pool healthy enough to keep trying again next wave. And one of the things that I do sometimes prefer, actually, in these sorts of scenarios is uh, when the really strong split pusher actually pushes in the, the lane where the inhibitor is already down, uh, because that can often put more pressure on because it's actually very difficult as a Shen at this point in the game to solo clear out these super minions. And if you're getting shoved to the Nexus turret, that lane can oftentimes create more pressure than just pushing in that top lane. Um, so it could be something that they'd look to do maybe a little bit later. Yeah, and what's nice is the minion waves are so close together when you're this close to the opposing base. Gally was always in range for the ulti. Mm -hmm. He is only ever two seconds away from joining the rest of the squad, so it is pretty easy for Lucy to do that. And even if you dive someone, they get the damage reduction. It's actually pretty convenient to get that to happen. Right now, the Echo Fox can go for another reset, and they have given a bit more time for Liquid to breathe, and it seems like based on their play, they're playing mostly for Baron number two and less to push an inhibitor down at this time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as Baron spawns, Piglet likely will not have his flash back up. And being that flashless Kog'Maw, it's so easy if he's checking into, you know, no vision areas to dive on this guy with the Elise, with the Echo, and then follow up with the Galio. And if they can all land on top of him, there's almost no chance of survival for Piglet. The case here, 9,000 gold lead. Echo Fox still staying inside the jungle, hoping maybe someone looks at their blue buff. And you can just see the ping saying, hey, join me here, join so me there. Dark. It's just no vision whatsoever for TL around that Baron. And, and they're just going to keep waiting for now and keep controlling this area as, as the bot lane will push him from supers, creating pressure there. Uh, Echo Fox will have the chance to either bait as Baron spawns or even just rush it down as they did last time. Absolutely the case. 9,000 gold. Let's see what they can get on the middle lane. Froggen looks for the stun. Not going to find it. Patience, another reset for Acadian. The fact they've recalled about seven times last minute says, yep, it's definitely the Baron play. And they've routinely said, let's make sure the vision is gone. That's been successful so far. Froggen and Looper actually still gonna threaten topside because they expected TL to go and contest Baron vision once again. And it means that top and hip is under threat. Froggen's gonna kite back. Looper feels safe doing this. And as the mini wave falls, let's see what's gonna come in next. And the bases that they have been completed have been pretty impactful here. Is Froggen gonna jump onto Rain over? But, oh. Holds back to be safe. It's a pretty short cooldown. He's got 30 CDR and items and maybe more in runes. Either way, Frog is going to feel pretty good about that. And they have not yet hit the Baron. It has already spawned. And in fact, bot limb inhibitors respawned as well. So sadly for Echo Fox, they've really gotten nothing done aside from that second Infernal Drake as a result from the inhibitor kill. 
Yeah, you, you do think though, uh, they should have all the advantages to grab the Baron. And this next Baron uh, should be one that they can end the game with if they're able to secure it. That said, if TL can you know, hold them off and be able to take the Baron themselves or even just contest it and keep delaying the game, they could get themselves into a spot where they could really uh, start doing some work. But we don't even know. Teal could already oh, they be were losing waiting. that Baron. Yeah, they don't know which one it is. If they're waiting in the brush, they're going for the fight. All they saw was that Varus and Echo were around, but no one else. So who knows? Is Baron dying? What do you guess? Is Baron dead or no. not, chat? Is Baron dead or not, audience? Is Baron dead or not, Azale? I can see on my screen it's not, but you never know, and it's impossible to say. And they played for a kill. They didn't get it. They could have killed off Baron, but it wasn't something they knew how Liquid were going to react to. And I think now, with Shen showing bot lane, I think you have to at least try to force out a stand United or a TP, and then look for the fight. So they are going to start it up. Galio is kind of trying to wave. They're trying to delay a little bit on the side here, and, and that should give it away that they are over on that Baron. Now pushing him out, they secure the Baron. No chance of a smite steal from Rainover. Yeah, they had Froggen on standby to make sure he could join in and fight Rainover if needed, and that's not going to be a pickup for Liquid here. Good stun. They find Keep for some damage. Gets a shield, though, and out he goes. Life steals back off the Raptors, thanks to his Blade of the Ruin King. Hexdrinker meant he wouldn't get one shot by Sushi's ult, and Syndra chooses to save that cooldown, which I believe is actually the right choice here. Yeah, especially with, with Gate there, uh, right beside him. Yeah. Very likely you're going to get a shield out before you would go down anyway. So Baron back up for Echo Fox, and this is one where they really want to start uh, to put the putting the finishing touches on this game, right? You need to be able to push in, get that bot inhibitor, have Froggen really pressuring top. He's almost level 18. He has those three items, and they should be looking to knock down multiple inhibitors here and try to close out the game. They get for themselves as the bot lane is the place of Looper's new residence. Waiting for a couple more seconds. Lucy to wave clearing the top side, and at this point, Echo Fox, it is time to close the game out. There's no more reasons to keep waiting. Vera number two is as good as an elemental dragon or a... Uh, Elder Dragon would be here at this point. So Echo Fox, how good are you at closing the game out with a 9,000 gold lead? Yeah, because if they, if they can't close with this Baron, I mean, Kog'Maw is getting very close to the point where it starts being quite concerning. I mean, when you finish that Rage Blade, you have a QSS on top of that, the three items, you can really turn around some fights. Like, you can start doing some major damage at that point in the game. So Piglet would be a threat uh, to really be able to take things over. So Echo Fox want to push the pace, want to try to close this out, and be looking for a pick on Frog. Zonius for Frog, it means he's going to dodge away from Sushi's stun. Now going to kite back. Shield is around if he needs it. He can uh, just barely almost 60 mana remaining. But now he's still on the wrong side of this fight. So he's hoping to buy time for his team who are pushing the bot lane. So Frog is 1v2, but the rest of his team has killed off part of the base. Problem is, it's trading a kill for an open inhibitor feels wrong for the team with a 9,000 gold lead in Baron. Yeah, I agree. I think Froggen should have just made a run for it. it. He had his flash available. Instead of actually trying to use the Zonias there, you can simply run straight up, flash away. If they chase you away from the base, uh, you're allowing your team even more time and perhaps the ability to even try to push for an end there in a delayed 4v3. So he wanted to try to make the big play and maybe try to turn it around on a Slushy or simply didn't think he could get out. But I have to feel like he could have just flashed out of there and at least a lot more time. Yeah, I tend to agree. It's likely he could have played that one differently. And that's the way it's going to be for now. Quick rub buff goes over to Piglet. And as far as that Blade of the Ruined King, he's still roughly 1,000 gold away from the combined cost. He still needs the Blasting Wand and the, I think it's 875 for combined. So uh, several minutes to go still for him. He'll get as much gold as he can. As Echo Fox now have Frog and respawning in 45 seconds of a Baron buff. They're going to look for mid before that. Rageblade will be done. Yeah, they really would like to get something more off this Baron because while the gold lead is still large, you know, it was 10k a while ago, right? And, and as you get later and later in the game, the gold lead means less and less percentage-wise. So this gold lead is not only shrinking by number, but it's also shrinking by impact, you know, this late in the game. And if you give it too much more time, now that gold lead is going to really not be relevant whatsoever. Okay, so we'll see if Fox can make it keep going because they've still got themselves a bit of a timer. We know Piglet has the mechanics and he certainly got the champion to make this late game happen. Liquid actually 3 to 1 up in kills almost illustrates that Echo Fox have not had a good time getting into good fights. Their early macro play has been good, but they've been riding on that for so long. It's been a slow, risk averse, barren focused play style. No Banshee's pop right there. Good sidestep by a Cajun. This time he will lose it to. Firework came Brock, but now a root on Piglet pops the QSS to get away. It's looking for more damage. Keep that half HP. A cage finds a stun, but gets zoned out by a Rainover, but it did chunk down Piglet to one quarter. There is no minion wave to push with, though. Meanwhile, as you had talked about earlier, it is Froggen pushing in the super minion wave down towards the Nexus, and that is going to be harder to defend for the Shen. 
Yeah, and I think that's actually very intelligent. He can actually try to threaten some damage onto the turrets even, uh, because Shen is not really going to be able to return much damage. There's no chance of a 1v1 type kill there. Echo Fox needs to siege aggressively. They're trying to do that, and Froggen is even looking to threaten a flank. Not going to find it just yet. Gate gets a bit of speed out of his quest and runs right back down, but that inhibitor turret's at half HP, and Froggen is still buying a bit of time. It's almost unfortunate Echo Fox would like an Ocean Drake in that mix for the regen on these extended sieges, for how long they are outside the base trying to crack through, and there's no extra regen for that. Maybe a uh, Warmog would help on Looper a little bit for a bit of extra touch there. Really minor things that wouldn't necessarily change the outcome of the game, but would make this maybe easier to do. Yeah, the, the Warmogs is actually an, an interesting one. We saw Darshan uh, buy it the other yep. day, uh, just essentially standing as that front line in front of his AD carry the whole time, intentionally absorbing poke, waste, making their opponents kind of waste their spells because then you just step back, you regen right back up. And if it's one of these prolonged situations, Warmogs is very powerful. Uh, where the item is not as strong is in like a full on all in, because then the passive is really doing nothing for you, and some of the other tank items become more effective. Right, and you're buying raw health against a Kogma with a Ruin King who yep. literally does percent health damage. So so you're right, there's there's pros and cons to it. Echo Fox right now going for the efficient in combat items, and we'll see if they can get more. Right now it's gonna be yet another reset. So Baron number two did as much as Baron number one, which was kill an inhibitor and lose some players. Yeah, and, and I mean for all the credit we were giving Echo Fox for, for how well they played the early game, they really are feeling like they're stalling out and and yes, they still have the advantage. Yes, they have five dragons, and if they pick up an Elder, that will be massive. Uh, but they do at some point have to pull the trigger and actually be willing to go for more aggressive plays, go for a dive, get something done with that. Because for now, it's been Piglet just aggressively wave clearing and uh, Echo Fox without much of an answer. They have not been willing to try a dive. They have not been willing to really push in and, and take down more inhibitors, which could be the killing blow. 3750 will be the Elder Dragon respawn, so we're just shy of two minutes on that. Which means, actually, Echo Fox in one minute can kill Baron, wait another minute, pick up Elder Dragon, and then there is no possible stronger state you could be in this game to close the game out. And, and with how slow Echo Fox has been playing, I think you absolutely now go for that play with the two staggered objectives, and then that's how you try to win. The question is, did they wait too long? You know, this this is actually a very strong Kog'Maw at this point, and, yep. and while vision advantage is still a very, very real thing, if you stack up as a five-man squad here for TL, have the Shen be the one kind of face-checking some of these bushes, get some vision back, you could realistically take a fight at this point in the game. The lead is not such a, a big deal anymore. Obviously, Double Infernal and the gold lead is still very big, but Lulu Kog'Ma is going to make up for a lot of that. Yeah, and I'm guessing Lulu's going towards a Zeke's Harbinger with uh, or Zeke's Harbinger. I forget what it's called now at this point, but with how uh, the item base itemization is going, that cloth armor is likely to be that. It's that or a locket. We'll see what it ends up being, but one of the options to give more damage to Piglet. Now mid lane, you can see that TL actually feel pretty comfortable like sitting outside their base, letting Piglet walk up for auto attacks, and he certainly does feel safe off this so far. And Froggen working on this bot lane inhibitor again. He, he will be able to get it eventually. There's not much of anything I think Lolo can actually do to stop him. Um, so he does take that, but it's not the end of the world. And, and Teal has done exactly what I what I said. They're able to move out as a squad, and they're able to actually get vision around the Baron here, uh, which means they should be in a position to potentially contest. That said, Echo Fox still has the five dragons. They could even threaten a trade and then try to dive or try to do something. But mm -hmm. they need to eventually make a move, and this is really starting to feel like a lot of the problems that Echo Fox had in the Matt's past. On the wrong side. Felt like they didn't do anything. Wow, Matt actually just like almost walked into Acadian down there. I know he had Flash available. Maybe he gets away, but almost could have gotten run over for that one. Echo Fox didn't see him in time, and looks like they're going to go for this Baron first. If Liquid sniped the Elder Dragon, it's not a very big pickup for them, but the denial against Echo Fox is quite good, obviously. Lushi playing aggro, looking for a stun, not finding it just yet. TP flank, this could be the moment. That is Froggen, and they are looking. Slushi is Slushi's spread alone. out the rest of the team. I, he can't get out of this one. He's just dead immediately. There's the first kill picked up. Galia makes the entrance, says, I'm here too, guys, and gets the assist for the damage reduction on it. And now it's a 4v5. It's going to be difficult for Liquid to fight this one. I think Echo Fox are happy to take on a battle at this point, but can they have it start? Poke coming out for Pig. It's all about this Kog'Maw. Can he kite it away? Can he get the damage? Puts on the Fire Arcane Barrage. He's timing it out as Echo Fox kite back. He's going to run out of range soon enough. Look at that damage on That's two autos. Did but now, help? But Piglet's back down to half range now. Can they find the taunt on this one? Piglet heals up for 160, and back to the mid lane they go. Full HP, and Piglet's W should be back up from cooldown. Looking for the stun is Froggen. Can't find it just yet. Big minion wave still stacking the bot lane. Echo Fox can turn tail and run down to mid a little bit. There's no minion wave for them in mid, but I'm going to look back at Baron instead. 20 seconds on Slushi respawning. Froggen and co. cannot find the team fight. Liquid 
kiting back just simply too well. And that pick on Slushy means almost nothing. Ten seconds till he's back, and they can only just now start on Baron. Yeah, I mean, TL will have to send someone bot to answer these super minions, and, and Echo Fox is on the Baron. They have double Mountain, double Infernal. It's going down so fast. And they're going to knock it down so fast to get the Garden Angel as well, and Slushy cannot join the fight just yet. He's stuck inside the base. They should pick up two. It's the stunner right over. That's going to be the two kills that they need. And once again, a 5v4, this time with the Baron buff. Do they choose mid or do they choose the Elder Dragon? The flash forward for Frog, and has to hold back away, but Piglet's one hit away from dead. Can keep Get him with a snipe, and he does not guess properly. The juke to the left, keep picking it safe for now. There's a the flash, Cocoon's gonna miss the stun onto Acadian, puts him down to 800 HP. Echo Fox, they're back on the chase forward. But they do get the Baron, they do take down Rainover, and they could even grab the Elder Dragon, but they're looking to just try to push this down with the man advantage. Now they can finally be aggressive and look to close out this game. The only summon left on Liquid is Lorlo's Flash, which can be high impact, but still a five versus four. Not that much poke really to be had by the squad. Looper putting the attacks down keeps the same. Lorlo has to get pushed back a little bit, and now it's a double inhibitor deck. 10 second respawn for Rain over as the minion wave gets cleared trivially down in the bot lane. But they're not going to push mid. They're actually just going to base. They want to set up for Elder, I guess, here. They don't want to try to uh, make that riskier play. I mean, you're still giving TL more chances. Yes, uh, they're having all the advantages, but. You give them too many chances in a 5v5 fight, yep. they still could win here. I mean, Echo Fox was struggling even in the 5v4 with the initial pick on Slushy. And of course, you keep in mind, these are humans. You can make mistakes. Those slip-ups do happen, and maybe one major slip-up is all Liquid needs to get back into the game. There's only a few items, slots left to go for Piglet. Elder Dragon now is the attack, and can Liquid really contest this? They can maybe look for a steal, but there's no flash and rain over. I feel like with two inhibitors down, you have to try to fight here, but it doesn't look like they're in position I mean, a five Elder Dragon burn is just like, yep, enormous. It's, it's a six stack now, so 45 damage times six stacks is almost 300 damage anytime you even touch a guy here on this one. As we look in, Reco Fox trying to close down onto the mid lane. They've got every piece of power they could possibly need. Can they close out the game? They started out so incredibly well, looking for the inhibitor turret number one, looking to blast that one down. Not a chance to respawn. And there's so few defensive oh, left. goes in the nose right back out just to kite away and burn some ult. But he nearly got knocked up by the wild growth, but did hit R in time. Leaper jumps back out. And again, Echo Fox having a tough time. Too much to do with this one. Looking now for the inhibitor itself. The siege is on. The shield is there. The inhib likely to fall. Piglet still in the wings. Nearly down to Cocoon. Look for damage into Acadian. Knocks him pretty low. Back on to Keep. He might take down Keep for the taunt. Is there the knockup? And they got Piglet. And that is all they really need. And now Rain over forced to kite away. He's burning down from the dragon, but the inhibitor is going to fall. And Echo Fox, five men strong. Finally, finally, finally have the tools to break into the base. No inhibitor standing. Only the Nexus turrets left up. And Piglet, the primary carry, no longer here to defend them. A TP just to make sure it's easy. Looper to rejoin the fight in the front line. The first turret going to fall. Keith in the back lines. He and Gate did win the lane, and it was a lot of the reason this game started out so well. And finally, Echo Fox, it was a struggle, but seven total kills in. They will knock down the Nexus, and Echo Fox, 3-0 in games, take on the first one against Liquid. They get the job done. It wasn't clean, but they finally are able to capitalize. They force the QSS from Piglet, and then knowing he has no summoners, Looper can flash in on him, and they take him down. A uh, valiant hold at the end for quite some time from Liquid, but they just gave up way too much in the early game, and their their macro game uh, left so much to be wanted from that. I mean, yeah, Liquid, it's, it's been the story in all their games so far. They have not been able to match up with their opponent's map movements and not been able to really uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the early game with that. Yeah, it's just so interesting, right? It's It's... This is not a game you can blame the mid laner switch for. It's just them no. simply not really playing very well as a team. Again, it's it's 80% credit to Echo Fox, 20% credit to Liquid for not answering properly here. I do like the early plays that Echo Fox had. I thought there were some really smart things. The invade from Acadian, the first blood due to Frogging coming down as well. The lane swap using the Galio with the item lead of the lane advantage they'd already picked up by going for the early Varus and the early Karma. Like these are things that were choices of Echo Fox. You can see that lane swap come in here. Just It's an item lead, and on the other side, Galio can just wave clear. Exactly, and, and that was one of the biggest things, is that uh, Galio had been consistently thinning out that wave. Uh, so not only does Echo Fox get the first turret, they also get two turrets, and Liquid cannot even finish the first of their own. So, like, this lead was was so big, and, and a lot of it was kind of participated by that Galio being able to wave clear, but it's also some poor decisions from Liquid. I mean, Rainover could have simply stepped out and helped finish off that turret, but then yep. they were panicking that they're losing 
two turrets in the top lane. They did not have the right people in the right place, and they gave up so, so much. And this happened not even just then. It happened again when they switched their bot lane back to bot. They take two turrets for a, a one turret trade in the eventual trade again. Yeah, and of course, that one may be more predicated on the fact they have a gold lead and a mountain and an infernal drake, but the, the situation is still there where the first 15 minutes were incredibly well played for Echo Fox. And even the, the 15 to 20 slowdown where they said, let's only play for Baron, I still think that's a good choice because it is harder to crack the inhibitor when you're 18 minutes into the game. But 20 to 40 minutes in was like just nothing happening. They're going negative in kills despite a 9,000 gold, despite holding onto a Baron. You can see one of these defenses here where they just tried too hard to kill off Slushy. Yeah, and, and it, it's one of those things where you want a little bit too much. They pop the cleanse, so they're thinking, hey, maybe we can actually end the game if I can land a cocoon here. Uh, but you could just take the inhibitor and then push in mid, get another inhibitor instead. Keating goes for the big play, is not able to land it. Slushy with a nice counter flash, and they are able to kind of turn around this fight, chase them down, and at least push them out of the base. But, you know, Echo Box was in control the whole time. Uh, the main criticism for them, if any, was really just how long they took to close a game with five dragons, an over 10,000 gold lead, multiple barons, and an eventual elder. Like, it took them so long to finish off uh, what should have been a very routine game, and uh, perhaps if it was another team with that lead, might have been, you know, a 25, 26 minute game. Sure, to totally agree with the ability to end the game. Definitely wonky from Echo Fox. Our final replay is going to be the game ender where they finally did have the six stack Elder Dragon, the Baron on top of it, and they'd already done well before. Yeah, and Piglet is trying to you know, posture aggressively, trying to chunk out the back line, trying to make something big here happen, but he had no summoners. The QSS gets forced. It's an easy taunt flash in there for Looper, and as soon as you get a hold of that Kog'Maw, he's the linchpin. He's the, essentially the entire composition at that yep. point in the game. Yeah, he really is, and just at a certain point, you can't dodge everything forever, and that opening finally presented itself for Echo Fox. Mm -hmm. And again, maybe they were there and they failed to take them, but this is the one where they finally got the lead, held onto it, and, and did something with it. And of course, with the Kog'Maw dead, that was just, okay, we can close the game out from there. And it means it's three games now. It means that it's Echo Fox, who are uh, undefeated in games, undefeated in matches. Of course, uh, they took down FlyQuest yesterday, which is actually a pretty strong team, and they arguably got an upgrade in the bot lane with Wild Turtle, so that's already a good win. Liquid, yes, they've been struggling to find their footing. But... Yeah. In, in a season that's already been so interesting where the top teams are all losing and the bottom teams now doing really well with like Immortals being 2-0, etc. Like, this is nice to see all the sort of tumultu tumultuous, tumultuation, I don't know if that's a word. Tumultuous. Tumul yeah, the tumultuous sort of early standing so far where Echo Fox had sat around in like eighth place and hey, maybe they're going to be tied for first at the end of the first week, which is good for them. Yeah, it definitely is. But to be fair, strength of schedule, I think uh, also plays a big part in that here as sure. well. You know, they are playing against up against FlyQuest and they're, which was, you know, a top four team to win. be fair. Um, but then now you are playing up against Liquid. And and one of the things that is worrying for me for Echo Fox is just uh, the trend of kind of the struggles in the late game as far as, you know, you look at Froggen in the, in the solution versus Cassin in game where they, you know, failed to actually kill the Nexus against FlyQuest. And then it, took so long and then this eventual kind of like crazy backdoor scenario where they are able to actually finish it out but they're massively ahead in that game too yeah and they really struggled to close as they did here and if you give really good teams a lot of opportunities to come back and you give them too much time yeah you can get punished and that's that has been something that echo fox has been struggling with for the last year plus i totally agree and i think we will see those slip-ups punish them in the future but of course this is still a game win for echo fox it's funny because it feels like it was a game too yeah because like the first half of the game was like all right G GG, if that's SKT, like the Nexus falls at 18 minutes, and you're like, all right, that's game one. Wow, that was a slaughter, good for them. And then like the back half of the game felt like game two, where it was like more equal footing and Liquid are team fighting well. But that was only the first one. We still got at least one more game to go, and we are stepping away for a quick break. But Mean is back here for the real game two between Echo Fox and Team Liquid. Don't touch that browser. We'll be right back. It's done from Frog, I'm not gonna land that just yet, but the cocoon from the Fog of War is gonna land, and First Blood comes through. Finds him a bit of time as well, but Acadia's still gonna get attacked, and it looks like Patience may just pay off. Will they take him down to flat? Rain over and Piglet secure the kill. 1-1 one, one on the scoreboard. And a flash to run for Frog, and he's out of range oh, oh, now, oh, oh, and Piglet oh. does not have... Oh, he does! Oh, oh, he does! He actually has the mana! I take it back! Piglet from downtown gets the kill. I taunt soon, I taunt soon. I'm gonna look for Echo, though. He's zoom, he's zoom, he's zoom. I'm looking for Echo, too. I go, go, go. I'm not gonna ulti. Okay, good job, good job. Oh Three, two, one, Mantra E. There I go. Center. I'm ulting, I'm ulting. Nice. Good job, nice. good job. Bam, 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 bam. I'm actually so fucking Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go for Kong. No, no, no. Oh, dragon, dragon. Yes, yeah. I can go. Go for him, go for him. They will knock down the Nexus, and Echo Fox 3-0 in games. Take down the first one against Liquid.